before that, with the revolution, they called it the way of the Torah. It's from the Sipsei Chaim. He wrote a parish on Shimon Esrei. As I mentioned last time, <coughs> that it's, it's crucial that we understand the parish Amilos to, to know the words that we're saying when we're davening. Otherwise, uh, we're not fulfilling our responsibility of davening properly. And from the Sefer, the Chavetz Chaim has a, uh, a parish on Tefillah as well. So I, I want to start today with the Sipsei Chaim. Just to give us a little background, then we'll we'll see a, a little from the Chavetz Chaim as well. So, um, what the the Sipse Chaim was Rav Friedlander. He was the Majgiach in the Panovich Yeshiva. Uh, he was a Talmud of Rav Dessler, and uh, he writes things on a, on a on a deeper level, and he tries to give us an, a, an appreciation of different ideas. So we can come away with something uh, something good. Okay, so um, what he quotes this, he quotes a, a well-known Reb Chaim Volozhin from the uh, Nefesh Chaim. I'll just read the, what he brings down over here. It's Kamosha Kosov Hagon Reb Chaim Volozhin in the Sefer Nefesh Chaim. Lakol Mevin Yovin, anyone who is a thinking person will understand the low easy Onash al Yabashta, we a person did not come to this world. Says if we think for a moment about what's contained in our Shimon Esrei, he said it would be absolutely inconceivable that any person would be able to put together such a hate to use a word, a masterpiece. It is so perfect. Because listen to what the Shimon Esrei has to contain. Belichlol, it includes belignos and is hidden in it. In the, in the form of our tefillah of Shmon Esrei, Kavua, that the same tefillah that we say day in and day out, Besudura Benusach Echad, and it's written in one text. Hatikunim shall call Olamot. When a Jew davens, he is perfecting, he is perfecting the entire creation. Every word the Jew says in his tefillah is having an f- impact in all the worlds, from the Shemayim all the way down. Vesidre Pirkei Hamarkova, and the order of the, of the throne in Shemayim. Ushebekol Pam Shemis Palalin, every moment that a Jew ta- davens, Yuguram, he is causing Tikunim Chadashim, new perfections. Besider ha'olamot v'ha'kochos in all of the worlds and in all of the strengths and all of the powers of, of the world. V'hamshachas mochen chadoshim acherim bringing down new things. Shemei shetiknu from the time that that was written down the Shmon Esrei ad bias a goal until the Mashiach comes b'mehera b'yamenu lo haya there wasn't. Well, lo yihiyeh, there will not be shum tefila. There will be no tefila. The pratus on a personal level, doma lechaverta, that is similar to the next one, shekodim, that was before va'achrav and sim and afterwards at all. Now, again, I want to make sure that this is understood. In other words, uh, someone once came to. Um, uh, Rav Shagafai Mendelovich, he was the Rosh Yeshiva of Torah Vadas, he founded the Yeshiva. And they asked him to write a parish on tefillah. And he said, how do you expect me to write a parish on tefillah? He said, every single day you're davening a different tefillah. Every time, every, every time whether you're davening Shachris, Mincha, Mayrib, it's not, the, it's not the same Shachris, Mincha, and Mayrib. What used to happen before the Shemona Esrei was uh, instituted, every single day a person would go to the Navi, and the Nevi'im, we had millions of Nevi'im in the Jewish world. We're familiar with the 48 the Gemara brings down because those Nevi'im were for all generations. But in, in Jewish life, there were Nevi'im all the time. There were millions of Nevi'im the Gemara brings down. And uh, they would go to the Navi and ask him, what, how, how should I daven today? What should I daven for? Each, each time that we were davening, we needed something new and something needed to be davened for. So, in, um, Included in this Shmona Esrei has every possible necessity for all of, for, for, forever, from the time they wrote it until now. 
not until Mashiach comes. Like he's bringing out again, there's no, there's no similar Shmon Esrei. The one that the Shacharis that you daven this morning is not going to be the same as, as the Mincha you daven. It's not the same Shmon Esrei. It says, V'chein kol yom l'chaveru. Every day, comparison to the next one, Shilafonov, that was before it, or that's afterwards. V'hu bilti efshar. It's absolutely impossible. It can't, it, it's, no one is capable of writing such a text. Imlo al yidei hanavu, except through prophecy, ha'elyona. And like we understand, who were the, who were the, the, uh, the authors of the Shemona Ezra, it was the Anshei Knesset HaGadola. These were, this was Ezra, the, the Ezra, Ezra the Kohen Godel, who took us back to Eretz Yisrael after the Golis and Bavel. It had Mordechai from Purim. You had Chagei Zechariah Malachi, the, the last in the Nevi'im. Through Bavel, Shimon HaTzadik, who we know he was the last member of the Anshei Knesset HaGadola. These people were, were prophets on the, of the highest level, Baruch Kodcho Yisbari, and they had a Holy Spirit in them. Asher Hofi Aleim, which dwelled on them. Hofa Atsuma, an intense revelation was on them. Be'ez Tikkun Nusach Matbeya Hatfila. When they instituted the Shemona Esrei that were davening, they had an intense revelation of prophecy in order to write down in those words that would contain infinite possibilities that would be necessary for all generations in every single situation. That we'd say that same text, but um, it, it impacts things as it's meant, meant to impact. Shom hu yizborach shmo befiem. Hashem put his mouth in, uh, put his name in their mouth. Elu hatevo svuros. These words are counted. They're, each word has infinite depth to it. The gnuzos betochem, it's hidden within them, kol hatikunim. Everything that's necessary for every person and for the generation is all to be found in that Shimon Esrei. And that's what we're doing. And uh, I think if we have, if we, if when we come to the Shimon Esrei and we realize exactly what it contains and what it has in it, as I mentioned yesterday, we don't want to be ever guilty of, of you know, never missing an opportunity to miss an opportunity. Every time we, we say the Shemona Esrei and we're davening, it has all the potential to, 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 to take care of everything I need and the whole generation. We're not <coughs> just going to explain each word simply. Anything that we think is extra, in other words, uh, in other words, uh, I'll just bring an example from uh, Rabbi Miller, Sperl He used to say um, that scientists, doctors in the medical world, they thought that the appendix was unnecessary. It's something that the body had. You know, the, the, the Kofrim, the denier, said that the body goes through an evolution, and the appendix at one time obviously had a, had a purpose. It was needed, and now it's just a leftover. It's an extra. He said, if, if you would buy at, uh, today, I guess, you know, You'll get a computer and there are buttons on it. And you see a button that you don't understand what's the purpose of that button. So what would you say? It's just, he just put it that, uh, you know, uh, uh, the computer company, IBM, just put it on there just for show it should look nice. You'd never think that. Obviously, it has a purpose. You would say, I just say, you don't know. You'd have to find out from the, uh, the manufacturer exactly what does this button, you know, what does it do? So the same thing over here, he's saying, in any word of the Shimon Estray, it's not, it's not something that we put together. This is something that uh, the VM put together. Yan Shekin Gadola were in the VM. And if they put in a word in that Shimon Esrei, it's not there. It's not an extra word. Every letter, every dot in it has a purpose to it. And if we think it's extra, he says, Kibavada, he's saying, Yan Shekin Gadola Daiku, they were so precise. The Lashonim in their language. Gamal Pi Hapshat, even on a simple level, knows it has enormously deep meanings, the Shemona Esra, because it has to have an impact in all the worlds. But even on the simple level, there's nothing in it that is superfluous. And, this, and that's why it is so crucial that we focus when we're saying these words, because it makes all the difference. Uh, you know, I'm going to say something over which I think uh, is, is a well-known idea. You know, they, they ask somebody, um, uh, I think, you know, to send an email. So, you write out the email and it says dot com. He says, what happens if you leave out the dot? So it doesn't go. 
which we see how even such a small thing can make an enormous difference. That there's, not, there's nothing there that's superfluous, it's not there just for show, and it makes a difference. That's, uh, that's absolutely crucial. Okay, uh, let me continue on with another. Now, he, he, he begins over here with the introduction to Shimon Esrei. And we say, Hashem Tzvosai Tifta Achofiya Gitila Secha, which is a pasuk in Tehillim. So a Friedlander opens up like this. He says, Anu Poschim Es Tfila Shimon Esrei. The pasuk said, this is how we introduce the Shimon Esrei. Ba'avshu Lachorahu Hefsik. On surface value, it looks like it's an interruption. In other words, we have a very important rule that we say you have to be some of Geulu Latfila. Certainly in Shachras, we certainly have that rule. We say Gaul Yisrael. And then we're supposed to go straight into the Shimon Esrei. And yet, before we start the Shimon Esrei itself, we say an introduction. We say, Hashem Svasai Tifta Chufi Agitila Secha. So, on, on, at, at seemingly, you just look at it superficially, it looks like it's in it. You, we're, we're breaking a rule over How is it that we're interrupting between the Geula of Gaul Yisrael and going straight into Shimon Esrei? It says, Kfar Amr of Gemara, the Gemara tells us in Brochos. But Tchilahu Omer at the beginning of a Shimon Esrei, you say Hashem Svasei Tiftach, and the Gemara answers, but even the Kavu Rabbanon Betfila, since the Chachamim instituted that, that that is the introduction to the Shimon Esrei, Ketfila uh, Richta Dami. The Gemara says that that's considered one part; it's, it's considered part of the Tfila. Vein Mahava Hefsek, and it's not an interruption between the Geula and the Tfila. It makes Li Hargosha, because if we don't have this feeling, this understanding. Shemigodal yira saromo. So when we step foot, when we take those three steps forward, and we're davening, we have to have in our mind that we are speaking to the Creator. We are having a we're having a meeting together with the Creator, and if we don't have that fully embedded in our minds, his batlos lefanov, and how we need to minimize, you know, we should put ourselves, you know, face ourselves. We should efface ourselves, make ourselves feel that we're, we're not there. We're not, we, we don't have the we don't have the right to open up the tefillah to say anything. We first have to walk into that Shimon Esri with that awareness. There's no connection between us and a tefillah. And to, to, to thank Hashem Amitis truly, First, there's a, pre, a prerequisite. We have to approach Hashem, umevakshim, and we have to ask Him, Hashem svasai tiftach, open up my mouth, open up my mouth. Bechoshim, and we should feel shirak hu anosin lano eset afsharud. He only a kodesh baruch hu gives us the capabilities. Ladaber befanav. It's we have to ask permission. That's basically what we're doing. We're asking permission to speak to you. Even though I have to have this awe, and therefore one might think that, who am I to speak? Once we say, Hashem Svasei Tiftach, that is the, when we ask for the permission, then Hashem gives us, grants us that right to continue doubting. Hashem, you open up my mouth, and then once I ask that permission, then then I'm able to speak. Right? And uh, the understanding is obviously, you know, all the different um, type of mashalim, all, all the examples you can come up with that whenever you want to speak to someone, you first have to go over and then uh, you'll be able to delve in properly. Okay, now, uh, are there any questions so far? No, straightforward? Okay, very good. The Seder Thank Gamur. you so much, Gabby. This is exactly what I need to hear. It's Psach, yeah. Thank you so okay. much. Well, uh, <laughs> I think this so, is something that we all need to hear. This is something that needs to be reiterated and reiterated because this is something that becomes so. Uh, we do so, the more, the, you know, when we do some when we do something over and over and over again, it, be, it becomes just so second nature that we we don't we don't appreciate well, what what we have. We don't appreciate what we have, and we and it's so it's very crucial that we need to uh, think about it more. Hashem Sosai Tiftach is a formal tefillah for Shmona Esri, or it's recommended to, if I want to say to Hillen, for example, should I do the same? No, no, no. You know, you just reminded me of something. I Thank you, Alex. I I tried I tried to um, try to say to Hillen every day now, 
and I forgot I, I had so many things to take care of this morning that I wasn't I didn't I didn't do that. So since you reminded me, Alex, you were shliach from Shemayim. I'm absolutely thankful to Hashem for reminding me of that. I don't like to miss my day. So I took it out now. So when I finish, I'm going to say my Tehillim for the day, as read Hashem. But no, this is this is again. I'll just quote to you um, uh, the, the Briskarov. He, he this is the favorite, very famous idea that uh, after Adam Harishon sinned by eating from the Eitzadas, it says he clothed himself. He clothed himself. Now. Um, so then Hashem comes to him later and he starts talking to me. He says, where are you? He says, why are you hiding? He says, I was naked and I, I was afraid to, to speak to you. So the brisk rabbi asked, what do you mean? What's going, what do you mean? What's going on over here? How is it possible? You, it says in the Chumash outright that Adam Arishan clothed himself after he, he ate from the eight sadas. So what do you mean you're naked? So he said that there are two levels. And this, this hopefully will answer your question. As after Adam Harishon ate from the Eitz Adas, he realized that there, there was something as a physical body. In other words, until Adam Harishon ate from the Eitz Adas, we have to understand he understood himself, he's an ashama. He's an ashama. It's just, just like we have shoes that you know cover our feet, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a shoe. I'm, I'm a, today we're, I'm a human body, seemingly. Adam Harishon was not a human body. The human body was like the shoe on his neshama. Just like we have shoes on our feet, his body was like the shoe on his neshama, but he was, in essence, he was a neshama. When he ate from the eight sadas, he realized now I have a body and that body needs to be covered up. Certainly what we call the makam erva, that part needs to be covered up. And that's what he did because he, he left the world of neshama, his neshama, Moshe Rabbeinu was a neshama. Moshe Rabbeinu became a neshama. He was a, Right, he was, he was an Ish Elohim. He was a man, but he was an Elohim. And Elohim is a reference to Malachim, it says in Devarim. This is what Moshe Ish Elohim said. Moshe was an Elohim, he was a Malach. He didn't need to eat, he lived for 40 days. Moshe Rabbeinu was not a, uh, was not a human being, even though we say, you know, uh, Mo Moshe lived in this world, he did, but it, it's two different, two different existences. Moshe was an Ashama, and that's what radiated from Moshe. Um, he, had, he perfected himself. But that's what Adam Rishon was. But afterwards, he became a physical being. And with that, he needed to cover that up. But then, when Hashem came to him, so this is how the Brisk Rav explains it, when I'm standing in front of the king, that, that, that just wearing my boxers, as if to say, that doesn't do it. I have to be dressed appropriately when I speak to the king. And that's why, well, you know, just as an aside, that's why there's a certain dress code before one davens as well. I'm not, it's, I'm not just walking around, you know, I have to realize that I'm speaking to the, to the Melech Malchim Amlochim HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and I have to be dressed appropriately. And again, the way we dress, I don't go to a wedding is when I go to the gym. There's a different dress code that I have. And uh, it's important for a person to, you know, to be sensitive to that. It's not, we're not going out to the gym. I'm not, uh, you know, not jogging around the block where, you know, that's okay. Then you want to wear your sweatpants, that's okay. But when you're davening, you're talking to the creator of the universe, so then it, it should, a person should be sensitive that, the, you know, it's not the same. And I don't, if I wouldn't go to a wedding dress like that, so then why am I talking to Hashem like that for? So, um, <coughs> so anyway, so that was the difference. So we see over here that there's a, di there's a different level of, uh, of, you know, being in front of Hashem in all of everything, and by Shimon Esra. Shimon Esra, I am standing literally in front of the Creator, and that demands a different dress code. And that's why Adam Rishon said, I'm naked. He wasn't physically naked, but he meant I wasn't dressed to, to be standing in front of you, Hashem. So that's why Hashem says, Tiftach, is when we're asking permission to talk to Hashem, that's only in Shimon Esra. It's a, it's a unique opportunity, because I mentioned the last time that the Avos gave over to us, Avram Avino gave us the opportunity to daven Shachris and Yaakov was, Yaakov was, was Mayrev and Yitzhak was Mincha, etc. These were the opportunities that they gave us. And that, that's when we need that, that, uh, that official request that Hashem, you should open up my, my mouth and I'll be able to speak to you. It's like Rebelo Yolapion said, he said, normally, you know, uh, if, you, if you put in front of a big person, like a person's going to a judge or whatever, 
his mouth, he would start shaking. He'd be so nervous he wouldn't be able to speak. So that's how Rebbe Lali Yappin wants to say, we're asking over here, Hashem, just give me the ability to talk because I'm just so, I'm just so frightened that I won't be able to express myself. And that, that's what we're asking from Hashem over here. Okay, I hope that uh, answered the, uh, the question properly. Okay. Um, all right, let me just, uh, I see it's getting a little late over here and I just wanted to do a little, it's Hashem next time, uh, as I said, the, the, um, the Sefer and Sif Sechayim, he goes through every word in the Shimon Esrei and hopefully we'll take a little bit, little pieces over here to get an appreciation of the deeper, you know, of an understanding and appreciation of what we're saying, not just the simple, uh, just a simple idea. He goes on to the word Baruch, Elokeinu, et cetera, et cetera. He'll, he'll give us a, a depth to it. Um, but, but, I, but I did take out the Chavetz Chaim, so I just want to um, give a little bit from the Chavetz Chaim over here, with you if possible. Okay. Uh, okay. So he brings down over here, there's also, uh, he's discussing how one should prepare for tefillah, the Chavetz Chaim says like this. This was written by uh, the Talmud of the Chavetz Chaim. It's called... Uh, it's the Nesivos It's a whole sefer of the, the Chavetz Chaim on, on tefillah. So he wrote over here, what is a, a way that one should prepare for tefillah? Ha-tefillah kadeshi de nishmas utekuba l'ratzon. If one wants his tefillah to be accepted and tzricha hachona mikodem. Again, like anything important in life, anything good, if you want it to be successful, the, the, the necessity is to prepare for it. If you want something to come out well, you need to prepare for it. You just don't walk into something, uh, you know, without preparation, because the probability of success is minimal. So here the Chavetz Chaim is being very uh, straight with us. He says, what is important over here is that we have to be very, very on top of our mouths and how we speak. Lishmor is the a person has to watch over his words. Milashon hara, naturally, not to speak. Loshon hara. When we call Dvorah Masrum, anything that the Torah forbids, we don't want. Now, there's a famous Gemara that, um, not even on this though, Gemara brings that, and if you'll notice, we have uh, two ears, two nostrils, two eyes, we have two of everything. Just, but when it comes to the mouth, there's just one. And this is the Gemara brings down that he said it would make it sense that there should be two mouths, just like we have two, uh, two of everything else on our face. Why do we have only one mouth? So to teach you that what you have one mouth and make sure that you use it for the right, for the good things. It should be only for mitzvahs and Torah, not to, because otherwise I'd have one mouth for the Torah and one mouth for other things. And therefore Hashem gave you one mouth and make sure you use it properly. But then the Gemara brings down also, it mentions that uh, if you look at the mouth, it says the tongue number one lies down flat, which is different than all other of our organs. In other words, all of our other organs are as if to say they're in a ready mode, they're in a ready mode, they're ready to action, they're in ready, you know, set, go. They're always in an action mode, whereas our tongue is lying down flat. So it, it, that's number one. And besides that, there are two gates on, be, before, the, before the tongue. You have the teeth and then you have the lips. So as so Hashem is trying to tell you, before you use, the, before you use your mouth, make sure that uh, it has to pass through number one. It has to pass through the two gates and to, to get action. And as Hashem wants you to think about it. In other words, uh, don't engage the mouth before the brain is in gear. Just make sure that you're thinking before you use other things. Right? Don't engage the mouth before the brain is in gear. And you make sure that you're thinking properly. Then you do it. So you're saying the same thing over here. We have to make sure when we speak that, that our mouth says things which are proper. Yeshuv is charet, and then if a person does have uh, mistakes, which we all do on some level, yekabel b'machshavta, we should try to uh, understand to himself behechleit shelo yachzo that he doesn't want to keep doing that. In other words, these are gifts that Hashem gave me. I don't want to abuse them. I don't want to damage them. If Hashem gives me things to use. I don't want to damage it, right? In other words, I want to keep it that it should be totally functioning properly because then it will have the most, it'll, it'll work properly. If, if it's a damaged item, then it doesn't, it's not able to work properly. Because only if I have proper thoughts, I'll be able to think in my heart. Then I'll be able to daven properly. In other words, 
we have to we have to you know think about these ideas. In other words, when I when I'm davening, I, I want to give myself the best opportunity for the most successful feeler that I can have. Because again, my, my the chakras I had is not going to be the same mincha. And if I look at it, you know, uh, it's, it's an idea. It's not my idea. But no, this is the only, this is going to be this is the only chakras that is ever going to be in history. This chakras, it's never going to come back again. Because very often, if we know that this is the one-time opportunity and you'll never have another opportunity to do it again, then you put everything into it. So the same thing over here. Every time I daven, or even when I say bracha or anything, this is the this is the only time it's ever going to be like this in history. It's never going to come back again. If I do, it'll be a different one. But that one that you have now, this is the one time in history that it's here now, and if we think along with those lines, Be'ezer Hashem, we'll, we'll, we'll come away with a, a whole different experience of tefillah and mitzvahs, etc. Okay, so I'll, I'm going to adjourn over here. If there are any questions, um, gentlemen, please, you know, if I can. If not, I'm going to do my tehillim, I hope. Uh, I read, I had a quick, sorry, I, I had a quick question. Um, when davening Shmona Esrei, um, does it make sense to learn the Shmona Esrei while you're davening or, or like obviously do prep beforehand, but it, it, it's okay to, to actually like kind of like learn it while you're davening at the same time? Uh, 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 do you have that much time to put into it? In other words, what I might recommend is to do a little bit at, at the t uh, each, t each day a little bit, maybe, but not, I don't think you're going to be, uh, again, there's no end to what you can learn. There's no end to what you can learn. You have to first start out with a, you know, a, a superficial understanding. And then as it goes on, in other words, we, 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 we you, it's the best is to, to, to have it when I'm going in there to have an understanding of what I'm, I'm saying. To, to start doing it then, it, it, it's, it becomes more problematic that way. And, um, and you do a little, 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 little by little. And that's the idea of Nasa Vinishma. No, there's always Nasa Vinishma. I want to learn. And therefore, it was counted as if you did it, right? That's the famous idea. Uh, the Pirkei Avos, it says, a person has more mitzvahs than he knows. How can they have such a thing, right? All the Mephoshim, all the Mephoshim asked that question. How can Pirkei Avos say that, is, that he has more mitzvahs than he knows? The answer is because he wants to do it. If a Jew wants to do something, then it's counted as if he did it even before he did it because he want, as he's learning, he's going to do it. So that, that's this idea, Mayor. You want to know the Shemona right? So uh, little by little, you'll become more and more familiar with it. It'll become, you know, more, more part of you. And th that it's definitely a very, very important um, goal to set for oneself to, to try and take, you know, part, even a part of a brach each day, a word, you know, to get, get a familiarity and an understanding of what these words are trying to tell me, right? And then I'll be, it'll be a whole different experience. Yep. Shkaya, Rabbi, thank you so much. Okay. Boys, great. Thank you. Have an amazing day. It's Hashem, and we'll yeah, think tomorrow. It's Thursday, it's our Shabbat, so we'll try and uh, discuss a little bit on the parish, I hope. That's amazing. Yashikaya. Okay, so bless. excited. Oh, <laughs> Look at those kids. <laughs> Leon, Nara. Everybody should be okay. Great. Amazing. Right. Have a good day, everybody. Okay, great day, boys.